an episode recently that took place in a uh, uh, Latvian gangster club in Riga, Latvia. And so the music supervisor came to me and they said, we're looking for some, uh, sort of, her, her words, uh, Latvian Euro trash music, just really cheesy dance pop. Um, as it happens, I didn't have, I, I have some Latvian music in my catalog, but it's all really sort of artsy and folky. It wouldn't have worked, so, um, but I have a, a label in Serbia that I work with, and he had some music in that style, so he sent me some stuff. And I, I, of course, had to go to the music supervisor and explain to them that Serbia is nowhere near Latvia. <laughs> They're not the same country. They're not next to each other. They don't speak the same language. Um, to which he responded, who cares? He says, send me the tracks. And so actually, if you watch this Latvian nightclub episode, uh, little secret is there's no Latvian music in it. It's, it's all Serbian. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do get I do get requests fairly frequently for you know um, if it's a if it's a French show they might want you know French chansons you know someone in a cafe playing accordion if it's a show that takes place in Mexico they might want uh, you know reggaeton or, or, or traditional Mexican music or music that really conveys the feeling of Mexico uh, so of course you know for for Portugal. There's that style, but of course, if you're, the question becomes, what if you're an artist from Portugal and you don't play traditional Portuguese music? That's totally fine. I think the thing is, I mean, I, 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 I truly believe that, that good music is good music. And uh, I'm, I'm able to pitch, you know, artists who are singing in Portuguese or singing in English um, if the track is right. Uh, but I do encourage artists, you know, remember in the States we have a, it's a lot of music, and uh, sync agents, let me, we, we get asked for sort of sound alikes all the time. Maybe not actual literal sound alikes, but people saying, we're doing a track and we want something that, we want to use a Led Zeppelin, but we can't afford Led Zeppelin. Or we want to use the White Stripes or Bruno Mars, but we can't afford that. What do you have that's in that style? Um, and it's challenging, you know, it would be, it's much easier for me, I feel, to pitch a band and not just say, oh well, this is this is the this is the Portuguese white stripes. But fine, okay, that's cool. But there's a lot of bands all over the world who sound like that. So, you know, what I look for in particular is really finding uh, finding artists that do have their own sound, whether it's a traditional sound or, or a contemporary sound um, that can pitch. So so far, I'm not seeing any hands up. This is this is breaking my heart, you guys. I have my own roster. I have about 35 labels and publishers that I represent, as well as some you know, individual relationships with bands. So these are all people that I've talked to whose music that I like, who I've met with, who understand that I'm pitching, um, and we've entered into a deal where I pitch. I pitch for free. Um, and if you're going to work with a sync agent to pitch your music in the States, and we can talk about why that's a good thing, um, I find someone who pitches for free and takes a commission. Um, there are some people out there who will offer to pitch your music and ask for a monthly uh, retainer of 200 euros a month. Uh, those people are crooks, in my opinion. Don't work with them. My, my attitude is, is I, only, I only make money if you make money. Um, if, I, if I pitch an artist, and this happens, to be very honest, I mean, because I don't have complete control, but it's all I can do my job as a sync agent is really actually not, you don't have to be that smart to do it, uh, clearly. And uh, <laughs> um, you really need two things. You need a good set of relationships with music supervisors, which is I spend a lot of my time uh, you know, in Los Angeles and London and New York meeting the people who, are, who work for Netflix or who work for... Uh, for Sony or who work for the different ad agencies, getting to know them, learning how they work, learning what type of music they like, learning what their styles are, and convincing them that I'm trustworthy, nice, easy to deal with. If I send them a song, 
it's going to be easy to clear. There's a concept called one stop, which is uh, means that you can sort of say, if you want to use this song, I can just talk, you know, the label is the artist, it is the publisher. We don't have to get permission from eight different people. Uh, we don't have to get a major label involved. And that's something that music supervisors love because it, it, it makes their job easier. So that's one thing is just having good relationships. The other thing, of course, is having good music, which hopefully I have. And then that's it. That's all I can do is I can only send the music in, you know, build the relationship and send in what I feel are the right songs. The music supervisor will listen and will either say, yes, this is good. We want to use it. And then we'll negotiate a deal. And we, we can talk a little bit more about how the deals work in the term and the territory, uh, or they don't. So I have, in other words, I do, I do sometimes pitch artists that don't get syncs. And it's not because I'm not um, working hard on them. It's because the music doesn't end up being, being the right way. Uh, but in terms of how I take my catalog on, is, I mean, is that what you're asking? Yeah. Um, I think it's I think it's a few things. I mean, I'm, I'm looking for music. Certainly, there's you know we all have our own personal tastes. Um, I'm not a metal guy. I don't know much about metal. I'll admit it. But it's important to have a little bit of metal in your catalog. Uh, the, the analogy that I like to use is that if you're a painter, you might not really like the color yellow. But you need some yellow paint, because if you want to paint a sun or a banana, it would be weird if you made it blue. Uh, so I try to get different styles of music in my catalog that, that can fit different needs. So when someone comes to me and they say, we want something <clears throat> that's upbeat and fast and has energy in a build, I have that. But then if someone comes to me and they say, I want um, Mongolian throat singing, why well, I have that too. Uh, so I try to have a little bit of everything. If you want to expand into the U.S. market, you know, there are, there are cultural differences, there are language differences, there are differences in how the industry works. But one of the kind of simplest ones, and the ones that you can't, the one that you can't really get over, is just time zones. Is that when it's nighttime here, it's morning there. And when it's nighttime there, it's morning here. Um, I think it's all the more reason why it's important to have a strong relationship uh, with either a sync agent or a publisher or a label in the States. So that sort of you know that while you're sleeping, someone's someone's working on you, on, on, on your music. And it's, you know, like I said, you know, the, the sun never set on the British Empire. And uh, you know, I think as, a, as an artist, you, you, know, you want to know that there's someone. Because when you're sleeping, that's when I'm getting all the, I, all the searches and all the briefs uh, for the States. So I'm, I'm working very closely. Um, some. Well, I mean, one of the one of the reasons I'm I'm here, quite honestly, is to get to know more Portuguese artists and, and, and Portuguese labels. And this is why I mean, this is why I like to travel the world. Is because I mean, I think my own reputation in the music industry, which is hopefully a good reputation. I don't know uh, that other people can decide that. Is that I'm the, is that I work with non-American music and with strange stuff. Um, uh, no Portuguese that I was spoken, in. Brazilian Portuguese, or Brazilian or Portuguese Portuguese, like Fado or. Well, so I get. I mean, do you think it's possible to export and sing? I think it is. I mean, I personally, I'm a, I I love Portuguese music. I mean, the, the Portuguese music that I've heard, I, I like Fado. I like I, last time I, I, when I was in Lisbon, I went shopping and I bought some just beautiful twelve string guitar uh, albums that, are, to me, are things that you can't hear anywhere else. Uh, you know, my feeling is that there are music supervisors in the States who don't know that they like Portuguese music yet, but they're going to like it. Um, and that's, this is a lot of what I'd like to do, is say, okay guys, I have this band, you've never heard of them, I promise. You're going to love them. I got a, a band from, uh, from Belarus uh, called uh, Supervesa. They sound like, uh, like the Belarusian uh, Joy Division. And there, nobody knows them in America, and nobody speaks Belarusian, and I don't speak Belarusian. Um, but the song was really cool, and I got in, I got into uh, into a commercial. I think a lot of it, knowing when to pitch Portuguese music in general, or when, you know, when to pitch anything in general, is you waiting for the right search. Um, you know, when, when I pitch, I use I. I don't like gun analogies, so I apologize for using a gun analogy. Not all Americans have guns, but I, I like to use the uh, the sniper rifle approach and not the shotgun approach, if that makes sense. Really find the perfect song for the perfect use, as opposed to 
Bleh. Here's a bunch of music. It's something that music supervisors don't like. Um, I think there is a I think there is a, a place for Portuguese music in the in the states. And again, this is both for music that really feels Portuguese and has a Portuguese flavor, and also just good good pop or rock music. I mean, I um, I'm a big fan of, of the Disco Texas label, for example, and Linux and, and stuff like that. I mean, that that to me is music that could very easily work in the same market in the states. Um, to my ears, that doesn't sound Portuguese. It's you know it's mostly instrumental, but I think it I think it sounds fantastic. Um, of course, you know the, I think there are certain things to talk about that are maybe specific to being a, a, a European artist um, in the states. Uh, one of them is I'm assuming that you are all registered with with the Portuguese PRO with I believe SAD I believe it is. Um, if you're not, do that. It's really, really important, really critical thing. Um, it works different ways for different types of um, sinks in the States, but there are certain types of placements that are royalty bearing, by which I mean, in addition to the upfront fee that you've negotiated. And then I not, and when I work with the artist and we find out what the budget is and they have X amount of money, um, every time a TV show airs, you get some extra money. Now, if you have a publisher, if you're working with, with Lusitanian, for example, or, 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 with, or with another publisher, one of their jobs and one of the things they can do is help to collect that money. Um, but one thing that you should absolutely do is, is uh, register your music. With, it, it is sad, correct? Is that the... SPA. SDA? SPA. Oh, SPL, I'm sorry. SPA. Spautor. Um, register your music with them because in, in addition to being a, a valuable resource and someone that you can talk to and get help, they have um, reciprocal mm -hmm. arrangements with uh, the American and British and French mm -hmm. and so on PROs, with ASCAP, with BMI, with uh, CSAC in the States. And so having that relationship, I think, is an important way to, uh, to, to, to make sure that you're getting extra money. Uh, because what I do, since I'm not a publisher, I'm just a sync agent, I'll make sure that when, when I get a song into a TV show, uh, I'll make sure that they send the, the cue sheet. So that's mm -hmm. the, um, you know, the, the, the list of, okay, these are the writers of the song, this is who they're registered with, this is you know, the numbers. And they send it in, and then I, at that point, I'm no longer involved. Um, but if, if you're if you're properly registered, every couple months you'll you'll get a check in the mail, which I think is a really valuable thing to do, and really really no point. And it's you know now no sometimes my labels when they're sending the labels I already work with when they send me music it is called track six by an artist. I go in, I change it, I turn it into an MP3, I clean it up, I keep it like you know like a, like a bonsai tree. Um, I don't think the majors do. Um, more importantly, though, they they move slowly, and I, I think you know the, the first thing that I do when I get a request or interest from a licensor in using a song is I go to the artist and I say, "Here's the situation. Uh, there's an online ad. I want to use the track that's uh, online worldwide. It's going to be for three months. This is the budget." and I can give my opinion. I will give my opinion. I'll say, I think this is a great deal, we should do it. I think it's a rip-off, you shouldn't do it, or I think it's a good deal, but we should negotiate a little bit. But my job is to, is to do what the artists want me to do. And if they say, let's make this happen, I do everything I can to make it happen. Um, majors often don't even consult the artists. And I've had times where sometimes I represent, I'll represent the master, for example, that the publishing is with one of the big publishers and the publisher will turn it down because they have a menu they say their, their menu is for TV this is the minimum amount of money we'll do it for and for um, film or an ad this is the minimum amount of money that we'll do it for now that that makes sense if you are if you're a major and your roster includes Coldplay you should ask you can and should ask for a lot of money but what happens when your roster is not on Coldplay they're also a brand new band that no one's ever heard of and there's a cool movie that wants to use them, and the band wants it, and the label wants it, 
and you say no. The office for the label and the agency, they were they were on the same block. Um, but but the label didn't think to send this particular song to the music supervisor, and the supervisor hadn't heard it. So even though you know, even though this uh, song kind of went from Oslo to California, back to Oslo, it, it, it resulted in the license. So these are the type of things that can happen. But of course, if you have a deal with someone in another territory, I've had people say, we don't pitch, don't pitch in France. Mm-hmm. We're covered in France. We have an exclusive deal there. And of course, that's something that I try and respect. You know, when I work, I mean, if, if I had talked a little bit about samples before, but you know, one thing that I have to do, I have to be so, so clear about who owns the song, who has the rights, because YouTube is a big corporation, right? YouTube is owned by Google. They don't want to get sued. Or, or the networks or the film studios. If they think that your song isn't your song, um, they won't use it. Well, it looked like it looks like they did. Well, it sounds like they, it sounds like they didn't know. I mean, I, I won't tell. I'm them, sure they did, but <laughs> I, I won't be the person to tell them. But this is this is dangerous. Um, there, you know, there are situations. I've had things. Um, okay, this is a this is a funny story to end with. Um, I used to manage a band uh, called Eric and McGill, and they were like uh, an indie pop. Like they sounded like a like a Bell and Sebastian or something. And one of their friends called them up, and I have to admire his, his bravery. Uh, he said, Eric, uh, I have to tell you, I was at home by myself the other night, and I was on the internet, and I was watching uh, a video, an adult video, on my computer. <laughs> and uh, your song's in it. <laughs> and I went, for, for research purposes, of course, um, <laughs> I went, and their song is in a, it's in a porn, and their song was used in a porn video, and I actually had to contact the company, the, the pornography company that makes these things, and the guy actually said, he said, well, I, I understand how you feel, he said, our, our material gets pirated more than anything else on the, on the internet, um, but we actually, I mean, we, it was, we were close to actually having to bring a lawsuit against them. Um, because they had used the song without permission. Um, so I think the point is, it's, you know, any time, if, if a song's not yours, if you don't truly have full ownership rights to it, you shouldn't be pitching. If there's, a, if there's a sample in the song from another artist, you need to reach out to that artist and do a deal with them ahead of time, or otherwise, I cannot pitch a song. With us. Well, I, mean, I, think the, so, up, I think the solution to this is to write your own music. Yeah. And it's, uh, I work with Afrobeat all the time. It's a fantastic genre. There's some great stuff. Yeah. Certainly, if you find a show that you know likes that style of music, reach out to them and, and build that that relationship with the music supervisor. I mean, I'd be I'd be happy to listen to his music and talk to him, but I'd have to have a much better idea of who the song belonged to, and, and yeah. you know, I would have to be very clear. Yeah. It's but, easy because he's always posting on Facebook the songs that he does. Come, so. come find, find me afterwards, and, okay. and, and, and yeah. I guess, we, I think we probably need to wrap up. Um, thank you.